Soul Way to Yomnes, this is I'm Emilia, also known as the Martian Geek, and welcome back to another episode of Donkey Kong Country Returns! In the last episode, we did 7-7 Music Madness, which, as the name suggests, was based around a lot of musical and rhythmic gimmicks. We beat the level, but we had to be sharp so as not to get crushed flat, and the key to doing this one is to measure the timing of all the obstacles and note where they will be at any given time, and eventually it just feels natural. I really like that one, though. More video games need to have music-based gimmicks in levels. I can't even think of any th that many that just use musical instruments as set pieces. I think the second world of Rayman Origins did, and I've heard that Rystar had a level like that. I don't know, I haven't played that far into the game. Point is... Oh, yeah, and we also did a Rocket Barrel level of sorts. But we don't care that much about that. The point is, we are almost done with World 7, and all we have left is the boss and the temple stage, which is 7k treacherous track. And... Well... Well, you'll see how this one goes. I mean, given my reaction to it, you can imagine it's not nearly as bad as some of the stuff we've had to face in the past with these levels, and we even get a DK barrel. Hey, what do you know? Basically, for this one... Ooh, actually, I like those graphics there, that background. This one is basically sort of a cross between Trick, Track, Trek from the first Donkey Kong Country game and Target Terror from the second, if you can imagine that. Or alternatively, just Tanked Up Trouble from the first. We have this platform on a track, and we have to hit all these colored switches, changing them from red to green, and not screw up like I think I just did. Okay, good. What? Nope, and I just <laughs> I just failed anyway. Eh, well, you can you see the gist of it though. We have a platform and it's on a track, but there are parts of the track that are missing, or at least retracted into the walls. And to get them back out so we can actually use them, we need to hit the switches. Changing them from red to green. And Yeah. This is one of those levels where if you do something wrong you don't really tend to get much of a chance to fix it, so don't screw up. I do recall the puzzle be pieces being a little bit of a pain to get in this one though, for the simple fact of the timing being so strict on a lot of uh, case in point. Well, I wonder if I should have just progressed anyway. I know I don't have to get the puzzle pieces, but they're there. This level, I will say, though, is still one of the easier temple stages. It's also one of those one... one whoop. Don't know what I was doing there, but it didn't work. It's also one of those where, if you can memorize where everything is, it makes things a lot easier. Definitely one that benefits from memorization. Okay, we want to go up here. We want to bounce on that that, and that's number two. And that is apparently failing to press the jump button properly. Good job! Okay, what is this uh, fourth take? I'll be ashamed if I actually have to trigger the checkpoint pig on this one. So like I said, is keep as secret levels in this game go, this one's relatively easy. But then again, I guess it just seems less annoying than some other nasty levels we've had to face in this game and others, because, as, like I said, well, I guess like I implied, it tends to go by fairly quickly. And if you screw up... Whoop. Hit that. Really just you just really have to keep on your toes, I suppose. And obviously those platforms collapse. Has there pretty much couldn't avoid that. Have there been any of those bell-shaped things that actually had a puzzle piece? Or are they just there to waste your time to make you think they have a puzzle piece when they don't? Careful there. So I don't think I've seen one yet. And, oh, Sorry, Diddy, but the puzzle piece is more important right now. And yeah, now things are getting a bit faster. 
I can imagine that part being kind of tough. But we're actually at the end of the level now. Like I said, that one really was not that bad at all. It goes by fairly quickly. It's not a particularly long level. And hey, we actually got kind of a neat black orb, and we actually got all the puzzle pieces. So I guess what I should say is the puzzle pieces in that one are easy to spot, but you have to go out of your way a bit to get them. But anyway, that's 7k done. And... It's boss time. 7B Feather Fiend. And based on the name and some of the enemies we'd the enemy types we've dealt with in this world, you might have an idea what the boss is already. Nothing over here as usual. We have some of this climbable surface here. Why are those chains green? I mean, obviously you know the design reason for it, to, so that you know you can climb them, I guess. Because that's the color of every other climbable surface. But we have a sinister assembly line with some creepy masks, and somebody who's not very good at aiming their banana goop. By the magical power of bananas, these lifeless masks can turn into tiki enemies. That hardly seems like the most efficient way to go about doing that. It's a psychedelic, maniacal chicken in a giant robot sh what suit shaped like an egg. Powered by the evil accordion. Straightens his goggles. Let's do this. Z for chicken. I actually can't remember what this guy's name is. General Cluck or something like that. Colonel Pluck. Anyway, I walk toward you like this. Right now, we kind of just want to avoid him. I said avoid him! Oh, and sometimes he does that, and I'm not actually sure how you're supposed to tell when he does that. But you want to get under him when he takes a big step. And then just go... He'll only ever do the red charge once on any given pass. What we want to do is wait for him to stomp with his legs out, like that, and then there will be a surface under here and we want to grab it and pound and yank. Yes, we're basically yanking on the giant chicken robot's crotch. Awkward. I guess it is a robot so it doesn't exactly have anything down there, but... And also sometimes does this and leaves it open this way. Bounce the chicken all to crap. And we're back to the walking. I was supposed to get under there, wasn't I? Did not mean to roll quite that far. And there we go. Oh, now you give me the heart. I will say this boss has easily the best music of any of the bosses in the game, including the final one. Okay, you can't go under them when he's just doing the short scratches, at least I wouldn't try or recommend trying. Grab this again. And the leg thing overheats so much the legs pop off and it's time for phase two. Let the eggs fall. Chicken when he comes down to mushy. I actually haven't been keeping track of how many hits that was. I imagine you could get quite a few points here by jumping on all the chicken in a row. Don't know if he ever drops any drops enough of them to get you a one up, but whoa! I know you can't throw the chickens at him. These aren't the kind that you Whoa! And throw. Well, that was it! I expected that to last a hit or two longer, but that works. Poor chicken. I feel so sorry for the bosses in this game, seriously. But anyway, let's beat up the accordion who is responsible for this. Yeah. That boss battle was kind of weird. 
I'm not entirely sure how to feel about it. Like I said, it definitely has my favorite boss music in the game. It's really, it's really catchy, the theme for the World 7 boss. But I feel like there's a little bit of an element to randomness, an element of randomness to the fight, as far as, for instance, when he's going to do the charge, um, what kind of jump he'll do, and whatever that was, it's gone now. Wait, wasn't that the bananas? DK, you ruined everything. You should have just eaten those bananas. Point is, we're done with the factory world, sadly, and we will be moving on next time to the eighth and final world, the volcano. So, I will see you then. Chicken. Robot.